Good morning, church. Hey, it is so good to be with you today. It is so fun to be a part of this church. You come to a great church. Am I allowed to say that? I mean it. I love what God is doing here, and I love that you're a part of our wonderful family. You're a blessing, and I'm so glad to see you this morning. I did just come back from the West Shore campus, and they're going to have to go to two services, like tomorrow, I think. I don't know. Pastor Adam may not be ready for that. It is literally busting at the seams, and I took a selfie with them. Can I take a selfie with you? Okay, let's do it. Come on, everybody. Smile. Smile. It's Sunday. All right, thanks. Watch for that on social media later. But it's good to be with you guys today. Again, of course, I love you. I love our family. And I'm so thankful for what we've been into these last, uh, it's actually like six weeks. Hey, Lucas, is that six weeks? Yeah. So we've been in a series that's uh, called We Are Coastline. And the heart of the series is to share our values. And we've been using Isaiah 61 as a guide. And so I want to take you there once again, just sort of as a launching pad for where we're going to go today. It's in... uh, Isaiah 61, verse 9, it says this, Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. Now, the reason why I bring you to this particular verse is because it does fit with the context of generosity, which is what we're going to talk about. But really, I want you to see the bigger picture. It's about legacy, yeah? It's about what we're leaving behind. You know, Uh, GT, now Coastline, is moving into its 99th anniversary, which would be its 100th year, which is really exciting, and it's always been about legacy. And, And so even as we talk about, you know, money, finance, giving, generosity, which is where we are again today, I want you to consider that idea. It's about legacy. It's about what outlasts us. It's about the nations being able to see that the offspring are blessed, that the house of God brings blessing, and that the people who look on and see this place will say, man, there's something different there. Yes, because we function in the blessing of God. Now, That particular verse comes in a long line of verses where Jesus actually speaks about himself, and then it calls us, the followers of Jesus, along into the journey. And so that's where we find ourselves there. It's really beautiful. Truth is, generosity is a value of the house. For 99 years, we have been a giving church, and we have supported missions work all around the world. We love to give. We love to bless our city. We love to bless the world. We love to bless one another. We're generous we're loving. But the reason why we've saved this conversation last week, this week, uh, for the last is because we want you to understand that your money is not the most important thing about you. We love you. Your church loves you. This family is where you belong. And so we've spent several weeks serving you, talking to you about your salvation and your freedom, talking to you about your calling and your giftings. And now we're talking about generosity because that's the outflow of making a difference. God takes what he gives us and wants to use it and do more. And so I wanted you just to know that we've been praying for you. In fact, over the last four months, we've been really specifically praying about these weeks because we know that there's a lot that goes on as soon as we start to talk about money. We start to talk about money and people feel that it's getting very personal. And I understand that. And so we've been praying, actually praying for weeks for you, praying for months for you, praying that there would be an openness, that we wouldn't close ourselves off when we start to talk about money, that there'd be an openness, but also that whatever stronghold is there, because there is a stronghold when it comes to money, that that would just be broken. That it wouldn't be part of the conversation, wouldn't be part of our thought process as we enter this. So as we, as we now move forward, we've been talking about generosity. Last week we talked about the tithe. And this week I want to talk about giving over and above. So I want to take you back to that illustration. I think we have a picture of it. We had the two tables on the stage. The one table was our, you know, we just give to God. The other table was what belongs to us, what God has given us. So this is the 90%, and over here was the 10%, one of each item, whereas this one is just overflowing with God's blessing, and we're able to see in that image how good God is to us. And so what I want to talk to you today about is not this over here, this 10%. I want us to go over and above into this area. What does God want me to do with this? And the reason why I'm bringing you here is because generosity asks different questions. 
Generosity moves beyond the idea of not how much do I have to give. That's kind of this conversation over here. And into how much can I give? Or, or even better, how much, how much should I keep, right? I mean, God, you're so good. You've blessed us so much. And so what do we do with this? You know, um, I got home from a, I was at a conference this week um, as part of our, our fellowship, the POC. And when I got back this week, I noticed on my credit card statement that there was a bunch of new charges from Amazon, sweetheart. <laughs> I noticed there was a bunch of new charges and I was like, whoa, what's this? And she's like, hey, it's Prime Days. And I'm like, okay, wow, Prime Days, great. And, and, and you know, generosity asks new questions like, do we need this item? And she says, yes, we do. Christmas gifts. So we're already getting to that place where we're thinking about our Christmas spending. We're already into that zone. And so what I'm asking us to do is think about what we want to give before we think about what we want to spend. And so I missed the boat on, on Mrs. Moore. She's already started spending. Maybe some of you have already started spending as well. But generosity starts to ask that question. Is this something that I need or just something that I want? It asks another question. Do I have enough margin in my life, enough margin in my finances to be able to be generous? And if not, what does that mean and how do I do that? You see, we know, we, we, we talked about it last week, there is a real struggle to give. And this, this other table that was here, that, that tithing, that's a real struggle for us. But there's another struggle over here in terms of what do I do with this? Why is that? Why is it that it is so hard for us to give our money away? You know, for some of us, we might say, well, I need it. I need every penny of it. And for someone here, that may very well be true. And I want you to know that my heart goes out for you, that literally living paycheck to paycheck, living hopefully that God will provide enough for you to be able to eat. And I know that there are people like that in our city. The rest of us would say, yeah, but it's just expensive to live here. And I would say, absolutely. But the question that I wrestle with is like, you know, we still find enough money for a little bit of fun, don't we? entertainment, go to the movies, you know, maybe go to a, a hockey game across the street or a, a soccer game out at out Pacific FC. We figure out a way to have more than just the essentials. And so the question then remains, why is it so hard to give away our money when actually we'll be spending it on non-essentials? I'll tell you why. Because there's a spirit that wants to work behind your money. And I want to talk to you for a moment about mammon. This word mammon, it's a, it's a word that we address, it's a concept that we address in our freedom material when we do our freedom small groups because we recognize that there's like a spirit attached to money. It like works behind the scenes. I want to read you a verse where Jesus brings this to the surface. Matthew 6, 24, it says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, some of your Bibles might say God and money, and I want you to know, I don't think that's a good translation because the concept of mammon is important because it's not your money. Let me explain. Mammon was actually an ancient Syrian god. He was the god of wealth and riches. And so to serve him was to say, I want the money. Show me the money. So I will worship this ancient Syrian god because he's the god of wealth and riches and possessions. And the dominant emotion here is greed. And here is the spirit of mammon for us in the ancient context. But how many of you know, alive and well today, alive and well today, the spirit of mammon is alive and well. And that spirit can influence you even today. And it's why it's so difficult to part with our money. Because the truth is our money is just inanimate, isn't it? Your money goes where you tell it to go, right? If you have a budget, you can say money go there and money go there and there's no more money for that, right? If you, you tell your money where to go, if it was not inanimate, it would be controlling you. It's not about the money. It's about the wrong spirit at work behind your money. That's the real issue. That's the real concern. Money isn't good or bad, but if money becomes something you love, then the spirit of mammon will attend, uh, attempt to control you. 
And that's why Paul writes in 1 Timothy, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people, and here's the spirit of mammon right here, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. I suffer. I can suffer under the spirit of mammon. This is mammon, and it's at work, and it wants to hinder you from being generous because generosity builds God's kingdom, right? It's generosity. It's, I often say it this way, that the vision moves at the speed of the resource. So the resource has to flow, and so if the enemy and the spirit of mammon can clog that up, can hinder that, then we will not be the people that God has called us to be. I'm going to ask Oliver to come and give me a hand. I want to show you something, and I hope this brings the picture uh, into focus for you. You see, um, our generosity is one of the ways that we connect with God. Thank you. And, and, and because it, it creates intimacy between us and God. And, and the problem for us is we grab on to money. We desire it. And thank you, Oliver. <laughs> um, we, we, you know, we, we grab money, we get kind of tied up in this sort of thing. And what I, what I want you to see here is that, you know, when we grab onto money, we desire it and, and, and it can kind of bind us up. Okay, that's fine. I have to preach, eh? <laughs> thank you. So here, here's the point. Money can block, and, 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 and the spirit of mammon can block the connection of intimacy that we have with God, because our God is so generous. And when we function in generosity, we are emulating God, and the joy that we receive, and the blessing, and the benefit of being a giver is something that the enemy doesn't want, and so the spirit of mammon comes to block that, and we get wrapped up. We get wrapped up when it comes to our money and, and mammon starts to speak to us and mammon causes us to say, well, I, I'd like to give, but, but I can't. I'm sort of wrapped up here. I'd like to be able to give, but I'm stuck. And, and even if I do, it's, it's pretty hindered. And, and then mammon starts to speak to us and says, you can't afford to do that. You can't afford to give that money away. This is your money. You worked hard for it. You worked hard for it every single day. You deserve it. And then, and then you get into kind of where we are right now, and it's the fear stuff. It's the fear. Well, you know, we're coming into a recession. We better keep it all, every bit of it, just in case, because we don't know what's going to happen. And fear, the spirit of mammon, kind of wraps us up. And so how is it that we get out of this? You know, who wants to live like this? Like, oh, I'll get the check. Oh, I'll get the check. Oh, I guess I can't get the check, right? Who wants to live this way? No one does. And so how do we get free of the spirit of mammon? Well, first of all, we do what we talked about last week. We say, no, no, no matter what, I'm, I'm just going to give no matter what. I'm going to free this hand to give, and I'm going to give to God what belongs to God. But then there's something else, and that's what we're talking about today, and it's that freedom to be generous, and it gets that other hand free, and now all of a sudden I can give, and I can be a blessing, and I know that it's to the praise of God, and I can worship him. But here's the deal. Mammon doesn't just give up easily. In fact, it's always lurking around. You're, you're always kind of stuck in it. Every time you go to the store, every time you go to the mall, every time you drive by the dealership, every time you look at that thing you have that's not as shiny as it used to be and you think that new one looks better, you know, mine is fine, but that one's better. Maybe I should go ahead and get that. I deserve it. Mammon is always present. And it's a spirit. It's a spirit, and that spirit wants to be at work in you. And here's what I know. Some of you have actually believed a lie, and maybe for years, that you cannot give. You cannot give. And I want you to know it's a lie from the enemy. It's the spirit of mammon. And what we're doing together, what we've been praying about, and what we're determining as a church is that we're not going to be controlled by the spirit of mammon. We're going to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. And we're going to ask him, God, make us generous. Make us generous. See, over and above giving at Coastline Church is done through Kingdom Builders, and this is such a joy, such a blessing. Kingdom Builders is our way to radically move the kingdom forward through generosity, and it's so much fun. Um, you know, we have these, these coffee mugs. We're just trying to figure out ways to put money into missionaries' hands, put money into, into kingdom work. And so these mugs, you've seen them, the Coastline mugs, you know, the reason why we sell these mugs is one, because we want you to rep your church.
church. That's one. I go to Coastline Church, and I'm happy about it. They're really good mugs, but also, every time you buy one of these mugs, a portion of the proceeds goes to Kingdom Builders. If you buy this mug, $10 of the cost that you pay for it goes to Kingdom Builders. If you buy a bag of coffee at the Coastline Cafe, nine, no, eight to nine dollars, depending on how much we get the coffee for at that time, goes straight to Kingdom Builders. And so, listen, we want to feed your habit and feed the hungry. That's a good slogan. That's got to show up somewhere in our marketing. But that's the point. And say, hey, you know what? You don't have, it's whole bean coffee. You want it ground up. We'll grind it for you, right, Oliver? They'll grind it. We want to help you, but we also want to do everything that we can for kingdom builders because it's the way that we move the kingdom forward. And you're going to buy coffee anyway. Might as well buy it here, right? Let's do this together. Let's, let's be kingdom people. And so kingdom builders really has three priorities. It's global, local, and future. Global outreach, which is, you know, we give to our missionaries, our, our, our global family, we call them. We give to them every month out of our general offerings. We just give to them to help them with their basic needs, their, their housing, you know, just their living expenses. But then we know that God has put vision in their heart. And we want to be the people who say yes. We want to say yes to our missionaries. You've got a vision, we're going to fund it. And so all their kingdom projects, that's what we want to fund. And that's what we do with uh, Kingdom Builders. That's why we gave $30,000 to Christo at the beginning of the year to plant a new church in India. And that's why we gave over $100,000 away to the Ukraine because we want to be a part of what God is doing there and we want to help. And that's because you're so generous. And so we have projects in India the Philippines, Honduras, Ukraine, Uganda, Egypt, Myanmar, and Brazil. We're giving funds to all of those countries through our global work in Kingdom Builders. That's cool. That's really good. And then when it comes to local church expansion, I mean, you know, I just came from the West Shore. That church, that campus was planted through Kingdom Builders. It's that kind of stuff that Kingdom Builders does. It plants churches. It funds local outreach. It helps us develop our buildings and our properties so they can be more useful in the kingdom. And then also there's future Christian leaders. And so this is where we train and release the young. You've heard us talk about that. That's where internships, camps, apprenticeships, Bible college funding, next-gen outreaches, all of that fits in there. So global, local, future. Seems like a great place to give your money, hey? And so we love Kingdom Builders, and we just feel so blessed by Kingdom Builders. And I want you to know that already this year, through Kingdom Builders, you, the generous people of Coastline Church, have given over $220,000 to Kingdom Builders. Way to go, church. Give yourselves a hand. Way to go. You're making a difference in the world all around you. And I want to actually show you a video from uh, one of the places where we were able to give in the Ukraine. This is a pastor who I follow on social media. I watch what he's doing. He's a friend of a friend, and I just love what they're doing in their community. But I want you to just see this quick thank you video. That's to you, church. Let's take a look at it. Hello, Uh, Pastor Andy. Hello, church. Большое спасибо вам в церковь из Канады за то благословение, которое вы передали нам для покупки данного джинса. Мы приобрели благодаря тому, что вы пожертвовали, и вы и другие церкви, и другие страны помогли нам приобрести бус для церкви в Украине. Сейчас война, и мы можем хорошо трудиться во славу Господа, помогая нуждающимся людям. Мы сами перемещаем грузы, перемещаем людей больше. Amen. Does that not encourage your heart? He's praying blessing over you. Why is that? Why is he praying blessing over us? Because he knows that those who bless become a blessing. Those who are blessed can be a blessing. And when we receive blessing, we can be generous again. And that's really a principle. I want to give you a text, a passage of scripture that really drills down on the principle of over and above giving. And here it is. It's 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 11. Let's absorb this together as a church. It says, remember this. The reason why it starts there is because it's easy to forget right? Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you 
should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God, listen to this, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. In verse 9, as it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Verse 10, now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, Coastline Church in this context, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. That is an over and above picture, isn't it? That, I mean, we're blessed in every way, we're enriched in every way, we're enlarged, we're supplied, and we increase, and that through us, other people give praise to God. I'm telling you, when Pastor Christo received that $30,000 to plant a new church, he gave praise to God. I want to send $20,000 to our missionary in Honduras, Kim Hodgkiss, because her van keeps breaking down, and it's this four-wheel drive truck thing, and it keeps breaking down. She just sent me an email again. It's broke down again on the side of the road. I want to send her $20,000 so she can buy that van. Church, we can do that, can't we? These are the kind of things that we get to do and say yes to because God has blessed us. It's above and beyond giving, and it's a blessing to the world. So you might say, okay, great, Andy. I'm getting encouraged. I'm getting excited. What should I give? Well, let's go back to verse 7, which is one of the verses we read. The first thing I'd say to you is I want you to decide in your heart. That's what the verse encourages. Decide in your heart. You pray, and whatever God tells you to give, I just want you to do that. Nothing less but nothing more. Just do what God says, because when you do that, we'll be blessed. We're going to let the Holy Spirit guide us, not the spirit of mammon. We're going to do it with hands lifted up in worship, not tied to our sides. We're going to do that as a church family. So some of you may say, oh, I'm just going to give monthly, and that's what Lisa and I do. We give monthly, and then when our tax return comes, we get ready to give uh, a little bit extra as well. And so that's the way we give. You you can do it however God would lead you. Maybe you want to set aside a, a sum every year and just give that, or maybe you want to give a percentage, or you want to give monthly, whatever is fine. Just hear from God and do what he tells you. The second thing that that verse says is is don't do it reluctantly. Don't do it under compulsion. Why? Because that's the spirit of mammon. That's why you don't do it that way. That's hands tied at your side. I, I have to, I want to. No, no, no. But instead it says do it cheerfully. This word cheerfully is where we get our word hilarious. It's hilarion. And hilarion means joyful. It's beautiful. It means I'm ready to act. It means I've already been persuaded. You don't have to help me decide anymore. I know I want to be in on this. It's cheerful giving. That's Holy Spirit giving. It's a different spirit altogether. I, God, I'm just so excited to give. You know, Charles Spurgeon was once asked, how do you know that you're a cheerful giver? And he said this, a cheerful giver always wishes he could give 10 times as much. Now, isn't that a beautiful idea? Oh, Lord, here's what I got, and I'm excited to give it, but wouldn't it be good if I could give it tenfold? Wouldn't it be good if I was so overflowing with blessing? I'm excited to give, but I wish it was more. And cheerful giving just shows that picture of the abundance of the grace of God in our lives, doesn't it? Just that overflow of the abundance of the grace of God in our lives. And the picture is this. I hold nothing back because no thing has a hold on me. Amen? No, no, no object, no money, no, no source, no mammon. None of that has a hold on me. And so I just give. And now it was the Apostle Paul who wrote this passage of Scripture to the Corinthians. And so you're talking about a Jew writing to a Greek. And the Greeks had lots of money, and money was prominence, and money was status. And the Jews at this time were actually quite poor. But the reason why Paul could speak with such boldness is because of his, the understanding of his, even just his Hebrew culture. You see, because as a Jew, he understood that the word for righteousness and charity is the same word. It's, it's zedakah. And zedakah means that if I see someone in need, as a person made righteous by God, I must do something. I may not have a lot, 
but I have to do something because charity and righteousness are the same. And somehow in our culture, we've separated them. I can be a really righteous, godly person and not give. It's not true. They're linked together. And Paul understood this, and so he speaks with such boldness. And so I say to you, Coastline Church, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, we must all do something. Amen? The world is in need, and God is calling to us. We should be a part of this. And some of you might say, well, what's my $5 going to do? What's my $10 going to do? Can I just tell you? I want to remind you of what we did for the Ukraine. You gave your five, and you gave your 10, and you gave your 100, and you gave your 50, and you gave your 500, and the next thing you know, we gave uh, over $100,000 to people in need. That's Zadaka. God used you. We listened, we prayed, we responded, and as a result, we were able to make a difference, and we did it together. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we all got to be a part of that. And what we learned in that is that when we do our part, God does a miracle. Isn't that true? That's what he does. He, he does a miracle. And so I want to invite every single person to follow the prompting of God. Just listen to God and do what he says. And I know that through that, there'll be some miracles along the way that we get to celebrate. And also, we will literally break the spirit of mammon off. We don't want to function this way. We want to be a part of a church that's free because where the Holy Spirit is, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Freedom in Jesus. And so let's be generous. And it's a miracle season. And, and it's a time for us to unite around giving. And so I want to invite you next week, come prepared. It's our Heart for the House offering. We're going to use those funds and we're going to be a blessing. We're going to use those funds to continue our projects and our works here on this campus. And everything given next week will go to that. And this is a special Kingdom Builders initiative. It's not separate of what we do. It's a part of what we do. It's the same spirit at work. Heart for the House is an important piece of what God has called us to do. And so I want you to come ready to give. Ready to give so that we can furnish that West Shore Ministry House. Ready to give so that we can create the preschool spaces that are now, you know, nothing but bare studs back there. Ready to give so that the Church of Jesus Christ will be strong locally and we'll continue then to do what we do around the world. So all year long, friends, we give, and we give, we give. And this is one more opportunity to give, but this time, it's a thank you. It's a thank you to God for 99 amazing years of what he's done in this house. And we say, Lord, keep it up. Keep doing it. Be faithful as we are faithful. So as I... As I kind of conclude today, I want to, I want to just give you one last thought. You know, let's, let's say you, um, you're out for dinner. It's your favorite restaurant, right? You go and you sit down and you order your favorite meal. And your company this time at your meal is a little bit different. It's not all your friends. It's not all the people you hang out with. It's not family. This time you're sitting around with those who have a little bit of a different story. Let's say you're right here sitting beside you is a, a young 13-year-old boy who lives out in the West Shore, and he's really lonely. He's bullied at school. He's suffering. He doesn't have a lot of hope. Spends most of his time in his bedroom. That young man needs an invitation. He needs an invitation to that ministry house where we're going to set it up with video games and comfy couches and lots of snacks. And he's going to meet Reed, who's the youth leader out there. And he's going to find some hope, some belonging, some friendship, some place to, to really find Jesus in his life. You know, and across from you here is that single mom, the one who's had a really rough time. In fact, her, she has a restraining order against her husband. She comes to church with her preschooler. And because our space is the way that it is, because it's secure and safe, because you can't get in or out without that special tag, she finally feels safe. And she can leave her preschooler there without the fear of her estranged husband. She can sit in church at peace and worship. 
and maybe over here, just to keep the focus on the global, is our missionary in Egypt. I actually can't tell you his name because if I was to tell you his name, then we'd have to stop the recording because he's in a dangerous place. He's called of God. And last year or the year before, we gave thousands of dollars to help him establish a training track for missionaries into the most closed countries in the Arab world. Because of Egyptian Arabic, they can go. And if he was sitting here, you'd hear him say, Andy, if I just had a little bit more money, I could send these five missionaries to those terrible countries that are so hard to get into, that are so impoverished, that are so close to the gospel, if I just had a little bit more money. Well, you, you enjoy your meal with these three, and at the end, the check comes. It's been good. I'm going to ask you, who picks up the check? Is it the boy? Is it the single mom? Is it the missionary? Or is it you? <laughs> you know the answer. I'll take the check. I'll take the check because it's the least that I can do. Church, that's the kind of church we're called to be. We're the ones who pick up the check so that salvation can come here, so hope and healing can come here, and so the gospel can go to places that we will never go. We pick up the check. Amen, church? Let's pray together. God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for the abundance and the blessing that you have placed in our hands. God, we truly understand what it means to be a river. Father, help us to never be a reservoir keeping it all. But just to be that river that flows and, and is a blessing to so many. God, I know you want to abundantly enrich us, but it's not for us. It's for the world. It's for the cause of Christ. And so I pray, Lord, as we prepare ourselves for next week to give as we all determine to do something, I just pray in Jesus' name that you would burden our hearts. Burden our hearts for the world around us and let us be the kind of people who pick up the check. So we thank you, God, for the good work going on around the world. We thank you, God, for the good work you're doing through this house. And we give in this special anniversary offering next week, we give it with joy. We give it with hilarity. We give it with a sense of, of being convinced of the good that you're doing in your world. So we thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen.